we're gonna do something that's really unique tonight. We have our artists here who get an opportunity to introduce themselves, but for the sake of this community, we're gonna invite our, our guests who are in-house onto the, the couch with us. So we want this community with us to kind of join us here, get a little bit closer if they don't mind. I, look, I'll spread it out for you. This is gonna turn into an art after school special. <laughs> And we are gonna bring everybody forward. I love that moment when like, they're like, come on everybody. Um, so if it's okay, everyone who's in our community, if you don't mind just joining me, bring your chairs, bring you, bring your libation, and come a little bit closer into this community. I think you would appreciate this conversation more, being in front of our artists, experiencing our artists. Yeah. And just to give everybody the cheat sheet, a lot of these folks in the room have already asked some of the amazing questions, so they're gonna come up again. So artists be prepared to answer the questions again. <laughs> so the rest of the audience can hear you. I was, I was eavesdropping, but I think these folks in the room have a great handle on what they've experienced, and I want to be able to kind of collectively share that with the community. So without further ado, I'll have to walk us in. Tonight we're doing a, an artist talk here for F is February. Um, the two gentlemen have had the pleasure of theming themselves, so I can't wait to dive into what F is for February mean. I had a couple of ideas, but they're they going to handle it for me. Um, <laughs> we're going to embark on a journey diving into the heart of the black creativity and expression, exploring the nuances and often overlooked aspects of black excellence in the arts. Uh, we have two gentlemen here, both Alonzo and Buck, who I've had the pleasure of meeting and installing and doing work with. By the way, shout out to Buck. He was my first exhibition I ever did. He kind of welcomed me into his art journey, so I appreciate him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, we're also going to talk about just the arts in general. Rather, some of us are the gatekeepers to this thing that we call black art. Um, we're also going to dive into the individual practices and processes of both Black and Alonzo. And we're going to look at some of the elements, rather, as cultural, political. We're going to kind of get into a lot of conversation. Of course, everybody in the room, what I love to do is at moments I'll go, is there anything else? So when I say that, that's your moment. That's your cue. So I'm gonna, I don't know, count y'all in. I'm gonna just look at you and blink. I'm not sure what I'll do. <laughs> but for the sake of this conversation, I want you to feel just as warm and welcome as I feel being in front of these artists as we, we do this. So we we'll don't need the mics now. I feel like yes, we do. You know, we, we do because it's live. Yeah, so it and it's live, being recorded. So, so yeah. we want to make sure yeah, that the voice is picked up. Yeah. Shit, so. <laughs> I feel like I am. <laughs> Um, without further ado, if it's okay um, for everyone in the room, I read artist statements and then I say, screw this. And I'll tell you why. I think artists do a better job at sharing who they are when they're in front of you. You can read an artist statement and still not quite understand who you are dealing with and what you will experience at the gallery, at any exhibition they're in. So if you don't mind, gentlemen, let's just say I threw your artist statement out the window and I want you to start me from the beginning or the end or the middle and sharing a little bit about who you are. <laughs> about who you are for, for our audience, and again, those who are experiencing your work for the first time. So stay, Alonzo. You're kind of right on my side here. You don't mind jumping in and sharing a little bit more about yourself. You are the owner. Uh, <laughs> respectfully. Yeah, that's respectfully. <laughs> Yes, yes, you need to talk into the mic, please. Yes. Like right there. Y'all like it's sitting right in front of me. Huh? <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, okay, I'm Buck, uh, from Baltimore originally. I've been here 25 years. I've been a uh, graphic designer, a uh, party, pr uh, party promoter, uh, bartender, uh, teacher, uh, gad about town. <laughs> done all those things, a little, bit of, a little hustle there, you little know hustle. what I'm saying? No, nothing illegal, but I'm cool. Um, and I've been painting uh, primarily for like the last six years. So I switched from, I've been doing graphic design for straight up 20, 22 years. Um, but I made the my professional switch to say that I'm doing, uh, I'm doing just painting, well not just painting, but primarily painting the last six. So I'm on the sixth year of this journey and it's like, and I've, been, and I've painted before that, I've had painting crews, I've had guys that work for me, muralists, all of that stuff, traveling to the U.S., making money, not making money, living a good life, trying to act like I'm living a good life. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is uh, y'all in the middle of this new phase of me being like, okay. I'm a painter. Okay. Okay. Wow. So there you go, that's my story. 
last two hours. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yes. That's good. That's yes. Good. But, but the original feelings was fuck shit. Yeah. yeah. Hi, right, come okay. on in. Hello. All right. Okay, audience. I mean, y'all are. Did I miss anything? Is there anything else? That's what I was wondering. Is there anything else? <laughs> I mean, literally, it really yeah. was that simple. It really was like, oh, we're going to do a show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I told y'all this was an after school special. Y'all didn't believe me when I told y'all that we were going to be in this. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit more about that, right? Like dive into that part, like reflecting on your, your personal experiences and that cultural heritage piece in your work, right? Like getting the call or, you know, of the course of your career, if that's okay, not so much this show, but in your career, have you had those moments where you had to balance your personal experience um, and like your cultural heritage in your work while avoiding the pressure like to conform, like the stereotypes of what your work would be? Was there any moment in time where you were like, you know what, I know what you're trying to do? So I'm, I'm going to go first and provide some context because <clears throat> although I've been making work for a long time, I haven't been um, what I call actively trying to promote myself or the work. Um, as I kind of hinted earlier, for me, um, it's always been just expression. It's always been relaxation, um, getting to a, a med meditative place. Um, to just be, be in a flow state. So that said, I haven't put myself in the situations or in many situations to have the exact um, uh, interaction that you're, that you're referring to. Yeah. But I have seen it. Um, I've worked with tons of artists, period. Uh, and we have had sorry, artists, gallerists, curators, designers, um, and I have been privy to those conversations. Mm -hmm. And it sucks. Um, much like Buck said in, in response to your last question, um, you said that we, right, I think you said, I am an artist, mm -hmm. first of all. In my normal, everyday um, ponderings, I try to go a step further and say I am a human. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and not, not that you don't, but just um, I like to start from that point so that I can uh, be on the same level with everyone that I interact with. t-shirts and kind of stuff like that and my stuff was always like super pro-black propaganda I did a lot of just doing propaganda since I've been doing propaganda since I was 17 18 you know what I'm saying like before I even got to college I started doing like propaganda type stuff like you start reading like Soul on Ice you're reading Malcolm X autobiography you're reading all this stuff and you're like yeah this is what it is and then my mom was like you know so my mom was like uh, my mom's a my mom was a hustler so she's a teacher a real estate agent and she was selling stuff at the flea market or whatever yeah. and so I was able to like do my own t-shirts so like you know what I'm saying so like I was doing propaganda going into college you know what I'm saying yeah. and so then when I got out of college and became a graphic designer I was like me and my boys had this thing called uh in Villa Shaka La Cima to Shindy in Villa Shaka we shall conquer without a doubt and it was like this whole dope thing we save the people do, 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 do. we're gonna do everything and I got this job at the museum museum when it was open so I was able to use utilize all their whatever they, you know they, they didn't care what you did with any of their stuff as long as you as long as you get the graphic done and get it up or whatever <laughs> they, and they be looking at you crazy I've been there talking about black revolutionary stuff <laughs> they be like okay Same day, <laughs> it's gonna be okay and um I think you just get to the point where you're like some people just be like they roll their eyes and it's cool and it's your thing, but then after a while it's like, what else can you say? You don't you're not you don't have anything else to say. You only have this one thing to stand on. 
Okay. And when you're talking to human beings sometimes, there's more depth to it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I had a conversation with a um it kind of threw me, I'll say this threw me off. I had a conversation with a, um one of my directors one time. And she's a lesbian, her and her wife had just adopted a they were talking about adopting a black child, and I said something. It was something, it was, it, it was, it wasn't ignorant. It was ignorant, but it wasn't rude. It was like, I don't know about that. Something, something, something. <laughs> and she was like, whatever. Young Buck was just out here. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Listen. So, and, and she was like, and she was like, okay. And I was like, and I thought about it. like these two people want to adopt, they want to take a child and take care of this child. I ain't even about to adopt that child. And I was like, man, that's stupid. So it don't be all. <laughs> I live, I, you know, and, and then I had a hasty exit from the museum. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, it wasn't. Later her. on, not. I, I, I not with her. She was gone. No, but I had, a, I had an exit at a point where I was, became so, I was so angry and so caught up in all of this, whatever it is, that mm -hmm. like when you pop, like I, I, set, I set myself up to get knocked off. And then what I realized, what I realized, me talking to my black coworkers about, you know, white man trying to hold me, they were like, <laughs> so when I got fired, they were like, Rodney had a rough day. <laughs> but it's just, but okay, so the movement no, forward, right. honestly, the movement forward is just like, when you're, when I'm painting, like, you're, there's, oh, there's always a, a certain amount of, of black iconography and cultural images that you're, you're going to see within my work because that's how I grew up and what I grew up in, you know what I'm saying? And that's not the totality of my life because I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? I rode big wheels with, you know what I'm saying, a whole plethora of different types of diverse people, you know what I'm saying? Like I hung out and I think my first date said it was Indian, you know what I mean? Like, like really Indian, like straight, you know what I mean? Like, so it's not, so it's like, <laughs> it's just a diverse, like my, my life is really way more diverse than that. And so of course you got these cultural pieces, you got these cultural things, you got, you know, Black lips, you got faces, you got Henry O. Tanner in pieces. Of course, they're going to get part of the work. Right. But it's not the work. You get what I'm saying? The work is that I'm, I'm expressing myself. I'm right. doing what I do. I'm painting what I paint. And it's going to come out however it comes out. You know what I'm saying? But it's not. I'm not thinking about half the stuff you think I'm thinking about when I'm painting this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about thought. I'm thinking about humanity. So back to the things we said to the human first. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about humanity. I'm thinking about, you know, uh, transcendence, impermanence. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about, you know, nirvana. I'm thinking about things like that. People are like, is that in there? Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is just my my way of doing it. And that's all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't know if I answered the question. Okay. 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 I'm going to look to my audience. I ain't going to look at nobody in the face. But is there anything else? Just like, just look around. Okay. They like y'all, they, they warming up. The <laughs> they warming up to you. Say stuff. Like, yeah. You know, talk. This is an open conversation. We got the mics. This is an open conversation. Of course. Of course. It's kind of weird, but, you know, at this point. Can I ask uh, a question for both of you? When you go into the studio, um, do you go in with an idea or do you go in? with just the idea of going into the studio? Mm -hmm. I think it depends. Excuse me. Um, for the majority of the abstract works that you see, there's no, there's no intention beyond doing the work. Um, if the work's good, bad, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's always nice when it, when it comes out um, interesting or appealing. But the um, the goal is really just to do the work and reinforce uh, things to practice, but also what the the effect of the practice on me. Yeah. Okay. And and then sometimes there are um, you know let, let's say like the title comes first and then a piece will come. It, it, it happens rarely. Uh, it used to happen more when I was younger. Um, but, but that also... Can I ask you then, uh, when the title doesn't come first, yeah. do you ever feel taxed uh, to title oh, yeah. work? The, ma <laughs> the majority of the works in the show were titled like... I'm sorry, Adrian. They, they were titled, you know, like three hours before the show. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going with that, but yes. That happened. Maybe not great, but let's let's say like ten. 
Um, but yeah, I, it, it is. <laughs> it is stressful. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's the work. Like, regardless of those students, it's the work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when I get up, I mean, I have, I have a whole, like, I do the same thing every day. You know what I'm saying? I get up, try to have my, my same little plan. I go get my espresso. Sometimes I get my salad. Sometimes I don't eat. I go, hey, my good. And I try out the studio. I light some incense. It's my own little thing. I light some incense, and they're always like, oh, that smells good. So I light some incense. <laughs> and then I like, I mean, you got to change clothes, whole process. And then it's whatever's in front of you. Now I take notes all day long, every day. I'm taking notes, so my Apple Notes gets full. Of, it's like a million Apple Notes. You know what I'm saying? Like I do all these Apple Notes with all everything I've been reading, everything I've been listening to, and I'm like, so I'm going. So I have these thoughts and concepts, and maybe like everyone's. I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna. Maybe I have, it. and I have images, so I take a lot of images. Like I'm always, I'm always taking pictures of different stuff. Like I'll just go for a walk, take pictures of different things. And then what you'll see is like, they start to appear in the work. You know what I'm saying? But the yeah. idea is that you go in like, you're gonna paint regardless. So just, you know, you got your tools, you got your stencils, you got your paint brushes. You know, I got, I got a whole process of the same thing. I empty out my dirty paint bucket every morning, rinse it in the sink, the sink. That's why the sink is so terrible in there. Yeah, so drain. That's because you put, that's you put the, uh, that other stuff, you do that latex. So you do that, what does your make acrylic just go straight up. But you know, so the whole setup, it's the whole setup. You make, make sure everything's in order and then I turn on the music and you just go. You know what I mean? So I know you earlier you were saying like, you don't want to paint when you're mad. Like only time I don't, like I don't care if I'm mad or not. I just can't be like, uh, like if you're run down or like exhausted, you ain't getting nothing out of yourself. Yeah. But otherwise, if you're mad, happy, sad, you gotta hit it. Yeah, not yet. <coughs> so, um, as you are doing a dual exhibition, what in each of, of your works do you see in each other or that you are inspired by each other? So, I got this one because I want to say this. Yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. You got it. Like, I went to his crib one time. It's like, God, he's going upstairs. It's like, yeah, fuck, this is not working. I was like, oh, this is crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, but it's also like it's like he's like yeah this piece over here I wasn't feeling it's like this like it was huge yo it had to be like a thirty by thirty six or something but it's like but Alonzo's and he's he's cutting up pieces of and I'm like yeah you guys are deep dark secrets I didn't say that. <laughs> right, right. but it's like but to do that to do, to do like a thirty by thirty six piece yeah. and it's all red but it's like it's a also a gradation of red. Yeah. Like you're like, like that's the shit where you're like, that's dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's and that's that's what yeah. like when as artists, that's what you get off on. Like when you like, it don't matter who you are. This goes back to ethics for February, right? right? It don't matter who you are. If you do something that's like, yo, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I've met people from all walks of life. If they do something that's dope, it don't matter. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is. Well, yeah. answer to this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Your studio. You have my channel more? Yeah, you want to. Are they answering your question? Okay. So, um, I appreciate the overwhelming complexity of Buck's work. Um, I don't know if I can expound more on that. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, do, do you, you or, or anybody else, um, know the anime Cowboy Bebop? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, it's one of my favorite animes, and um. Okay. I, did you I, see my ode to that in isolation? I didn't. But I, I did the swordfish between two planets. Uh, That's the swordfish from the Cowboy Bebop. Gosh, uh, yeah. Dope. All right. Okay. Um, I have one of Buck's piece, pieces in my um, living room, and every time I look at it, I, I see like cowboy bebop ish um, landscapes, cityscapes, mm -hmm. and 
um, you know, what, what my mind does is like kind of envision myself there and envision the different lives of the different people in the buildings and, and so forth. And I get the same thing um, in viewing Buck's work. Um, here. Um, and then the words, the phrases, the more, the more you look at Buck's work, the more you will see. Um, and that it just happens every time. Um, I do a lot too, and that, does that answer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I did have a follow-up question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've chatted with Buck about this before. Um, mixed media, and since uh, Alonzo does a lot of mixed media art collaging, do you ever feel inspired to, not emulate, but maybe be inspired by the other person's style of creating? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll answer that question. I ain't, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that a lot. Like that, what he's doing, no. I don't, I think, I, like we were talking about before, like I feel like what he does, I can't do. Like that's a level of, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm like, again, talking about the flow meditative state. Like I get in, I'm very much, I'm very much about attuning myself and getting into a meditative state when I'm working. But on that level, and that precise, that would, my brain would explode. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't work. You know, and that's just difference in, uh, difference in us as right. beings. You know what I'm saying? But, so, I couldn't do that. Like, yeah, no. I'm good. I'm good. So, I have a follow-up for a lot. Yeah. As we're talking about, as what you were expressing, couldn't do that. And I'm, one of the things that's always important to me is that people understand how long it takes artists to, from, from inception to completion to do a particular piece. So my question to you is, like, even one of your small pieces, how long does it take? Because I looked at those pieces. Yes. Those, those pieces are small. How long does it take you to do a piece? Um, the, the answer that I've given people for, uh, for two or three years is that I, I try not not to think about it. Um, yeah, I, I, I try not to think about it then because in the past my mind has tried to correlate the amount of time I spend on a work to how I feel about the work and to how much the work should be sold for. Um, and that doesn't always correlate you to the answer. Now I hear you, boy. You're a friend. This is stress me out. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I, I try not not to, I try not to think about that. Yes, um, but I will tell you um, with elucidity about um, about a little bit a little bit about the process. So um, for let's say the work uh, we work called Bernice. Um, the figure itself, the skin tone, is the amalgamation of like 60 of the exact same pages from one, or from, um, one volume of the magazine. All right, so it's going, collecting those magazines, tearing out the page, cutting out the, what it be, the skin tone, um, and then going into each one of those, and then breaking that down, and then tweezers, glue, and so forth. So e even in the prep work, there's time. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think we have one more question, but I do want to uh, welcome the audience who have just come into the room and let them know this is a bring your own chair to the table. Um, <laughs> bring your own chair on up to us. Um, we are creating a different community here. I like to call it the good old after school special of F is for February. Um, so if you are in the back and you need to get closer, please, please do not be shy. Come closer. Um, but if you feel comfortable where you are, I will let you be. <laughs> We do have another question. I want to move us forward. I don't want to everybody. Um, but you do have another question. I want to make sure I answer it. Um, I wanted to ask, especially about um, the period of COVID, as we call coming out of COVID, 
And as a creator, I noticed for myself when I had experiences of uh, fatigue or almost burnout mentally, I started um, shifting medium and I found that I was able to create in different ways. Like I would think of something in my mind or a song and then I would create it and then I, but before I knew it, I was doing all of these types of things that I had not pursued. Um, that said, that's helped me to navigate if I get tired of doing this type of medium. I switch and do something else and find this whole blossom of space. How did or did the period of COVID impact your relationship with your work and solitude? Like, did it really transition and open up some things for you emotionally? I needed COVID because I was in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was throwing parties and da, 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 da. I'm out, I was out like four nights a week, you know what I'm saying? Like I was out. I, was I needed no, i and, and so the funny thing is, so COVID was four years ago, right? Like yeah. I said, it's five, it's yeah, four, yeah, four years ago, right? Yeah. Sorry, four years ago. So yeah. like, and right before that, I had. I'm up to eight. So again, like I, I said earlier, my 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 journey, my my pri my journey in this game primary started six years ago. Right. So two years yeah. in, I'm like, and so I was coming. And so the crazy part at that point, like right before COVID, and that was my I did the first show I did here actually. Um, what happened was like I was doing the party stuff. I would come home and paint. So I'm up to. I would like get up, so the way I would break it up to keep working was I get up and go for a walk. Because I live like right by the National Mall, like right by the Library of Congress. Yeah. So I would get up and go for a walk. So I'd be up to like seven, seven, eight in the morning every, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. after being out all night and drinking all night. And it was, I mean, sure, it, it, let's say it was taxing. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Let's just say that. And, and, and the work was somewhat, I would say somewhat, there was some focus, but it wasn't enough focus. And what COVID allowed me to do was just kind of focus and paint. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I just painted, and it was like, "Yo, we done paint. Yeah. Go get some mud, paint." paint. <laughs> they, they, that's how you get the home, the home bar. Everybody got a bar at home at now because of COVID. So you drink a little bit, smoke a little bit, work a little, not work a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but it did help me shift. And I needed to shut down, man. I didn't need to be out no more. And I, you know, so I kind of, yeah, so that was my shift. Like, I just, it shifted me from being, like, I don't like being out as much now. I like, and I can, I can really say, I'm going to go paint. I'm going to studio instead of going to the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And your mind studio 54. Yeah, basically. <laughs> 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 um, I remember. So, I know that I didn't do as much art in COVID period, um, my um, cause I, I definitely worked um, my regular job, um, but my physical activity picked up. So I was biking um, between like 25 and 30 miles every other night, um, and I was biking at like two o'clock in the morning because it, it was beautiful. There was no one, no one out in the streets. Um, I you know, go down Connecticut Avenue, going as fast as I can, fast as I could. Um, but I, <clears throat> sorry, I naturally go back and forth um, between the abstract work and the more figurative work. Um, the figurative work is is taxing because, like, I'm, you know, whatever perfection I'm trying to search or achieve um, is hard to get to using paper. Um, so when that happens, when I see that I'm you know, working on four different pieces and there isn't, I haven't gotten any progress, then I might make something else that, um, that is much more relaxation, relaxating doing. <laughs> it is yeah. today. I'm making it. I thought you were going to make sure that you have to find out. I don't know what they're using. They'd be like, I got a word. I'd be like, I'm going to put a word. The other um, 
have new that came up is that I, there's a um, another another anime named uh, oh lord Afro Samurai. <laughs> so um, I started I can't remember the, the character's name no character's name is Puma. So at my house in a box I have about. 50 to 60 portraits of this very weird looking bear with samurai swords um, and guns and, and all that stuff. And I realized that, that like all those portraits are essentially me, like they express my anxiety of COVID or in COVID. That's what I was in that, I went down that base myself. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Ethics and Fedor. We gonna move you right along. That's crazy. Um, if it's okay, I want everybody in the room to kind of take one more look around. Let's give yourself 10 seconds to look at the work. And if it's okay, um, our artist here, um, Buck, if you don't mind, take this one. Um, when you had the conversation with Adrian, myself, regarding this exhibition, what is the first piece, if you don't mind naming the name, um, that stuck out to you when I'm gonna start with this piece? This piece has to go into that exhibition in a couple weeks. Um, what was the piece for you, if you don't mind naming that name of that piece? Again, there's several pieces in here, but let us know what name that was and kind of what sparked the conversation before the theme. I mean, so and, and talk about the couple weeks part. I think it was three. Yeah. It was, it was, it was very short. It was not normal. It worked out. Perfect. It worked out. Perfect. Children at home, though, we did. <laughs> yes. It worked out. Perfect. It did. But the evidence for February is really. So, the Henry O'Tanner piece, the Battle of Asatomi, is really yep. my evidence for February piece. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's like on oh, like several different levels. And it's, it, I don't know where to start because it's kind of like. There's, there's been a few interpretations. People have come in and told me their interpretations, and I've had to be like, no, <laughs> no. And this is, you know, and it's also so you're trying to respect folks, and you know, we all have our, you know, our cultural or whatever. We want to hold on to it when we see something, and then we have to find out. It's, you know what I'm saying? So really, this piece is really like. So it's really a, it's an ode to Henry O. Tanner. If, if y'all don't know who Henry O. Tanner is, he is. Uh, he was a black painter um, around the, the turn of the century. Um, he's named, his mother was a slave, his father was a, was a preacher. Um, he's named after this town called uh, Oswatoni. So his name is Henry Osawa Tanner. Yep. Oswatoni was where there's this pitched battle between John Brown and some pro Slaves. some pro slavery forces. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what he's named after. Okay. So he goes on. He's you know he's 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 just talented. He's he's a talent. So he goes off to uh, he goes off to college. He goes off to art school. You know, of course, he's picked on. He's in Philadelphia. He's picked on. Da -da -da, do all the things that you do to you know the black kid who's in an all white school in Philadelphia in eighteen. Yeah. 80, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's probably, that's probably not the cool time, you know what I'm saying? It's not a cool time to be in school. His professor's like, yeah, you need to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. You need to go to Europe, do your thing. So he goes off to Europe, and the, the one thing he said, like the first thing that took, he took notice to, and this is something that I like, picked up on, was like, they didn't call him black, they didn't call him nothing, they called him artiste extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. So he's in salons with like, I would say Pizarro, I don't know if that's, Pizarro still alive? I don't know if Pizarro still alive, but you got Man Named Monet, they got all these guys are still, they're still floating around. Okay. Van Gogh would probably be probably, probably like, uh, 10, 15. They are in the movie, anyway. But, so he's out, he's in these salons with these, these folks. Yeah. And he's, I mean, of course, he still has to deal with some level of whatever, but he's just artistic extraordinaire. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's you know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's Jay Z. You know what I mean? Uh, and so he marries this Swedish opera singer. Uh, he has this great life. But he's getting letters from back home like, yo, NAACP is like, we need you. We need you for the Negro voice. And he's like, mm. he's looking at these letters like, mm, I don't 
don't know if I'm good. I'm cool on that. So he comes back and he, he comes back to Philadelphia. He comes back to Philadelphia for like two, three years, and he paints the banjo lesson. And I mean, he did a study, you know what I'm saying? So he does his piece, and black folks pick up on it like, yo, this is this is it. That's not the last thing he painted. That's not the best thing he painted. It's something he painted. And so what we've done with this, and so he led, he led a great life. You know what I'm saying? He went on to start doing more religious paintings because he was really trying, I think he was really trying to stay away from the political aspect of all of this. So his paintings through the rest of his life are like more religious based. Uh, some of them are kind of like, you know, Oriental, Orientalism is a term that people use for some types of artwork, but it's more biblical based. But it's a great life. That ain't his best painting. The joke is that's not his best piece. But what happens, what we do in our society, in our culture, we take these things and say, this is it. So if you go to an HBC, you I don't know, raise your hand if you went to an HBC. All right, you've seen the banjo lesson on campus. It's been on the pamphlet, it's been on the flyer. It's somewhere, it's part of the HBCU lexicon. This is like, oh, when you go to school, this is black school. Oh, it's a black school. It's got Henry O'Tanner's painting. It's got the banjo lesson on campus. So what also happens with the banjo lesson, people are like, yo, you know the banjo lesson? You know why he painted the banjo lesson? He painted the banjo lesson to talk about Africa, to talk about this, to talk about all these things, to talk about. No, he didn't. He painted a painting. And then, you know what I'm saying? He painted yeah. a painting and went on to go paint other paintings. He also said when he was in Philadelphia, I can't stand America. I gotta go, I gotta get I'm out. I'm back out. I'm back out next year. You know what I'm saying? Like he was like, after I do these, I'm gone again. But you you can go online and look up right now, you can look up Henry O'Tanner right now and look up the banjo lesson. And I'll tell you all about the banjo lesson, what it means to Africans, all this stuff. And it's like, he wasn't thinking about that. Right. He didn't care about that. So the joke is, F is for February, you know? Like, this is not, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so the funny thing is when people come in, they see the piece, they're like, yo, oh, man, those are the ancestors in the corners. The ancestors in the corners. They're talking about, the, you know, yeah, 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 the faces. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no. This really just a battle it, it, with it, it's a subconscious battle within for him mm -hmm. like he's dealing with all like everything you deal with every day we all deal with you know what i'm saying like yeah. should i do this should i should i not do this am i black enough am i white you know am i too do i should i wear yeah. some looser fitting pants so they like me better you know what i'm saying whatever it is that we go through whatever it is you go through subconsciously do you worry about your pants <laughs> i don't i'm smooth <laughs> i get it from my daddy <laughs> cool. 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 But no, but no, but we do worry about all these different things. You worry about, you know what I'm saying, like in coming into February, Black History Month. Identity, are yeah. you it, it is all identity stuff. Yeah. And it, and so there are these subconscious battles. You know, these internal battles that we all have. Mm -hmm. So it's really this is really more about the internal yeah. battle of Henry O'Tanner himself. Mm -hmm. And just painting the painting and trying to get paid. Brother, I was sneaking here for Alonzo, uh jumping in anyway as you think of the piece you went to discuss. Um, this is why I said I don't like to read artist statements. If you read what the pamphlet says, you will be lost in someone else's thoughts. If you get an opportunity to stand in front of the artist, you'll hear exactly what it is. That is an exercise for everybody in this room, for F is for February, that to get in front of the artist is much better than reading a pamphlet and trying to decide whether you want to go, whether you want to support, whether you want to put your money in. Just go look. Just go talk to the artist. Just walk up and go, so what you think of your own piece? <laughs> And you'll be surprised what the narrative is behind like, you know, what's on the canvas. So this is my tip. Alonzo. <laughs> um, so the piece I'm going to pick is not as complicated in depth um, as Bucks, but the one that I'll talk about is called The or or Orator. Um, so it's kind of the culmination of two books, two of my favorite books that I read as a child. The first one is The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury, and then Ender's Game by Orson Scott Wells. Um, the Illustrated Man is a combination of um, like 20 short stories, uh, and they all intertwine. And the, I think the last story is The Illustrated Man. Uh, the character, um, his entire body is covered in tattoos, and the tattoos tell the, the previous story that you just read, um, and they tell the future. So that's one, one aspect. The second one is um, from Ender's Game, the main character, 
Uh, his name obviously is Ender. And in the um, third or fourth book in the series, he gets the new title speaker of the dead. Um, so he, you know, he speaks to the lives of those who have passed. So the orator is kind of the combination of those two concepts. The man or entity, entity that, um, that sees all and knows the future and then um, the entity, the entity that um, can speak for those who have passed, and that's the the orator. By the way, they picked both the pieces that I wanted them to talk about. Great, you and I. Uh, <laughs> anywhere in the room, I'm going to ask this my cold for anyone who's new to the new audience. Is there anything else? This is the moment when you take a moment to ask the question yourself. More of a community collective conversation we're having here. There is no Q&A at the end, by the way. <laughs> it's your moment. Um, so is there anything else that allows for you to think about a piece in the room you would love for them to talk about? One you stood in front of longer than a minute. One where you went to, ooh, I'm a dancer. I want him to talk about his dancing pieces, I love them. Um, or, ooh, I love love. I want Buck to talk about a piece here in the corner. Uh, behind us, um, is there anything else for anyone in the room where you're like, I'm dying to learn of this piece? And we'll have some time after two. <laughs> but we have for the sake of the talk, yes. For the sake of the talk. <laughs> Please, yes. No, no, because they're answering a lot of them. It's just, right. Yeah. Uh, so both of you all have very unique and different perspectives on the where do you start? Great so when question. you go to the canvas, or you go to your canvas, where do you start? Uh, I mean, mine's, mine is like literally just layers. Like I just, I like I, like every painting is overpainted. Like it's not. I don't do a painting and I'm like, oh, this is it. And that's, you know what I'm saying? I don't do that. Like I paint, then I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I paint, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. I paint. I don't like that paint. Then I paint, then I'm like, yo, okay, I'm gonna put some letters over here, put some words over here, and I'm like, I don't really like this as much as I thought. Then I cover half of that up, and then I'm like, oh, I do like this part. Like, so I just, it's like, I'm like, seriously, I overpaint, like I'm over. So like, if, if I didn't like any of these where they stood, I would have just kept going. You know what I'm saying? So it is, I don't know. So that one was like, it started off, I was, I was working on this project for Johns Hopkins, and so I was like, I'm gonna do a painting and throw it in there and see if I can get some extra money. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, and so it started out like a Billy Holiday painting. And I was like, I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. And then I was like, I, then I took a picture of some boxes in my boy's uh, studio. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be these boxes and make these crazy looking boxes. And so you still see some of the boxes. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's gonna be these boxes. And I was like, these boxes suck. So I come and then I was like, oh, I see this in it. And then it's like, also, like, if you, like, also the process is like, I'm doing between three and six months on each piece, right? So they're in a studio, so they're in a space, and like, and I do a thing where I drag them between the studio and the apartment. So you know what I'm saying? Like, with this size, I can put my truck and just throw it in and just, so I'll go, I'll just keep looking at them, like, oh, I see something, so I see something else in there. And then the process, the, the, the real work is like finding. It's not that you, it's not saying I'm going to do, I don't know, it's great shows. Well, yeah, I'm more of a designer. I know, I, I know, I don't know. Is, so that's not, yeah, yeah, I can hear what I'm saying. So I would, if I said, if I said I was going to paint Grace Jones a day, it won't be Grace Jones in six weeks. It'll be like, you'd be like, what Grace Jones? I'd be like, I didn't like her no more. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, but it's because the, the process is finding, finding the work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm finding work. I'm finding the real work within the piece. It's not what I came to canvas with. My preconceived, my, my, whatever my preconceived notion, no ma no longer matters. So that's the best way to put it. Okay. So are you looking at, let's say, just overlapping layers of paint and say, oh, this looks like a Cadillac, and then you put a Cadillac in there, or I pull it out. Got it. If it's there, you pull it out. Gotcha. I see in your pieces a lot of teeth, a lot of lips, a lot yeah. of eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason? Because it's pretty much in everything. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's the whole thing. I mean, the eyes are pretty much like, you know, I think about like, they're always, you know, we live in a society, we live in a society where it's like social media, TV, everybody's always looking, everybody's always got eyes on each other, everybody's mm -hmm. seeing each other. Um, the teeth, 
I don't know. I like this thing about. I'm, I mean, I am from Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore County. I grew up seven minutes from the city line. I have to tell you about it. I did not grow up in the city. I grew up seven minutes. But that don't make a difference. Because okay. when I was in high school, middle school, high school, everybody had a gold tooth. So you'll see like gold teeth in each one of these. And I wanted a gold tooth. And I wanted a beeper. And my mom taught at Northern High School, which is one of the worst cities, one of the worst schools in the city, which is only nine minutes from the city line. Well, it's in the, you know, nine minutes from the house. So it's like inside the city. And she was like, she would like, I would like get a beeper from one of my friends and she would take it back and she was like, you never get no gold teeth in your mouth. So, so but I loved it. I just, but it's also like the, the cool kids had gold teeth. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, you gotta go steal a car. You'd be like, I can't go with you today, but cool too. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, so you see, that's why you see the teeth and the, and the gold teeth. So, and I, I don't know, man, it's just something about like, I don't know, it's, it's just an expression. Like, and so teeth don't always mean happiness. Smiles don't always mean happiness. Right, right, and there's right. a whole, you know, there's a study that shows like when people used to, when the original man, the first man on earth was smiling, he wasn't smiling to say he was happy. It's more like you show your teeth, you know, to invoke fear within somebody else and to show that, yo, you come over here, I'm gonna, you know, so yeah, I'm gonna bite you. So it, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a both, you know what I'm saying? And it looks like, I don't know, maybe that's my black thing. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe it's my black thing. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I just, but I just, I pull all that stuff out because I see it, you know what I mean? So that's the best way to put it. Four lines though. So I'll kind of do a little deep dive on Instagram. And you mentioned the thing about collecting a certain set of magazines. Do you ever challenge yourself to grab magazines just whatever you get and then you figure out from there? Or do you always go with like, I want this specific color palette? Gotcha. Um, so I've only had access to the multiple copies of the same magazine for let's say the past three years. Everything before that was me just uh, getting random magazines and, and if there was a particular color that I liked, um, then I would buy you know 10 of the same, same magazine. Um, I think that, well, I'll tell you that I, I have a fixation for, for um, you know, trying to get the the perfect skin tone across a body um and to me it's only logical that i would use that exact same sheet of paper you know if, if the photograph the national geographic <laughs> i know I, if, if the photograph um that's the national geographic does it with that image and i should be able to, to do it you know with, with the paper itself <laughs> can I go back and answer to it? Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Okay. Um, can you repeat your question? Where do you start? Gotcha. That's right. Um, for the linear, the linear works. You know, it, it is a top, top to bottom situation. Um, I don't. All, all of these works, they, sorry, they overlap. So one layer is down, and then the next layer goes like halfway over it, of sorts, right? Um, I don't like doing a page and then seeing a spot that I don't like and then going back. It's weird, but to me, I, I can see the overlap, right? right? So I just I just start at the top and then I go down. If I don't like somewhere in the middle, then I'll take everything up and then make it work. Is that true? Is that piece right there? Ah, uh, so that, yes, well, no, I'm sorry. So that is like one of the three pieces where I did one layer and then I did another layer. Yeah, I like I it, I like it, but yeah. I don't understand it yet. Because yeah. like there, there's aspects to, to that process that I don't like. It's like an invitation to another thing, right? Yes, but I've learned that I can't take ex I can't accept the invite. I can't accept every invite yeah, yeah. because I won't be able to go to you know the first. Right. Yeah. Um, for the figures, it's usually the background. It, it'll use, it, I know, it's weird, but it's usually the case that I will see a color that I like in a magazine. 
um, and just fall in love with that particular color. And then I'll say, okay, so, you know, that needs to be the background for this. And then I'll search for the um, skin tone or, or whatever else needs to be needs to be in the image. But the same concept does apply, unfortunately, that like I want that overlap throughout the whole. It's harder to achieve in, in those. Um, but that's okay. Yeah. I've heard you say skin tone a lot, and so I feel like that, you know, so people talk about, like, what is the thing that inspires you most? Is there a specific skin tone that you're more fixated on? No, the, there isn't a skin tone that I'm, that I'm more fixated on. Um, the, what you might be hearing is what I experienced um, in, like, the first six, seven years of uh, making collages. Um, there aren't that many magazines, rather, there weren't that many magazines um, that showed people that looked like us, mm -hmm. right? So, to a certain degree, I, I was frustrated in, in that. That might be what, you, what you're hearing. Um, but I, I, I do have a um, connection at, at National Geographic where I can get a large amount of magazines, so that's kind of been allayed. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. We might need um, a vocabulary list after this for all of those oh, vocabulary lists we will have for you after this vocabulary list. Um, Alonzo, what if I told you that everybody in this room was in on this? And I gave them my questions already. So that's the reason why they were so good. Because there's no way in history that these were. No, you guys did a great job. <laughs> no, I'm like, what? Okay, I said that. They said that. Um, I want to wrap it up, if it's okay, because every artist talk has a cliffhanger. Because we want you to ask more questions, get more engaged in the work, take the time to get in front of your favorite piece again, and hopefully purchase a piece. I'm going to say that and leave that there. Um, but if it's okay, I want you both to answer this last question for me. And again, the audience, after this, this will be a moment where you can have the artist to yourself <laughs> to ask more questions. Um, what advice would you offer to an artist inspiring or to establish themselves as an artist, right? When you decided, I am an artist, period. Um, what advice would you give? Because you both have been in the game for a long time. Um, and of course, it shows in your process, even all the different layers that is you. What would you tell an artist who is coming up? There's inspiring artists in the room. There's artists currently here who wants to take it to the next step. What would you say? What's your advice? As they come out of February, excuse me, let me be clear. <laughs> As they understand that their work belongs in other parts of a year, what is the advice you would give? I'll respond to the first part of the question. Um, it's hard because I, I don't think that I am an artist extraordinaire. I, I whether it's true or not, I, I think that I'm still in my first, you know, years trying right to uh, establish myself as an artist. So, in that part of my personality. Um, So I guess I can only respond to to the practice. I think it's important to do the work um, as often and as much as you can to explore the work um, and to document the work. Um, and, and kind of over document to a, to a certain degree. Um, especially in your experimentations, so that you can see, not see, so that you can know the exact structure of what you did in this experiment, so that if you like it three years from now, you can just go back and say, oh, okay, I did this, I used this and this and this, and this is the process. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I got.
question? No. <laughs> no. Uh, what advice would you give an artist <laughs> at this stage who, who is aspiring, currently in, in, in the journey, right? Uh, with the wanting to move forward, with the medium forward, whatever that may be, and how do they get themselves out of the rut that is ethics for February? Just do the work. Yeah. Literally, like, that's it. Do the work, yeah. Like you get up, you do the work. That's all. It, but do the work. Don't do just what you think gonna work. Don't just don't go there just drawing Bastiat crowns. So you think it's gonna get you some money? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude. Okay. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I say these things. I say it on purpose because it's yeah, like, yeah. We, you know, I was having a conversation a little bit earlier. And we were talking about like certain things that people do. You know, I was talking to a curator. We were talking about it's kind of like you see like these younger artists and they keep doing the same thing over and over again and they do what they think is cool yeah. they, you know and you'll look at the work and you're like that's nice do I feel like I just saw that in the other room you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. I just saw that two minutes ago if I scroll on you scroll on Instagram or TikTok or whatever like you're like oh I like that and you scroll three more images you're like the same damn thing. Do the work, yo. Find, find you. So I, I mean, I'm still, I'm 50. I'm still finding my voice. But find the voice. Read. So I, you know, I think I posted like, you know, what to say, you know, uh, ex explore, expand, and express. But you can't do that if you're like, if you only stick in one, you know, one little silo. If you only say, I'm going to do black work. And then you say, I can't go. So, you know, I've had friends say, I don't like going to museums. There's too many white faces. I ain't never looked at the white faces. I don't care about that. You know, I'm looking at how, like, Van Dyke made these buttons on this, on this prince or whatever's coat and then made sure the coat looked like it folded out. And you're like, yo, how did he do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're looking at painting. You're not looking at, I'm not, I don't look at artwork for that. I look at artwork to be like, yo. It's just like when we're when talking about Lonzo, like, yo, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, what he's, what he's doing is dope. Like, it's the work. Yeah. So it's really just the work. And also, get you a benefactor, homie. Get you somebody that can pay the bills. Take out, take out a student loan. Take out a little bit of somebody else's name. Scam some old people. Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do to get that money. Because you got to pay for cameras and paint. That's a great way to wrap up today. Um, <laughs> um, I want to thank you both. I want to thank you both. Again, everyone who was in the audience, thank you. Thank you for your voice. Thank you for getting a little bit closer. Um, artist talks are not always designed this way, but I'm different. So I do different. Um, thank you both. Um, of course, I always start this going, I don't know what I'm doing. And we kind of lead down this path. Um, uh, thank you to Adrian, Art of Noise, um, for again welcoming um, us all into the space, um, uh, allowing the walls to be blank for you, gentlemen, you can feel it. Um, everyone else in the room, this is your moment, your time, space to have the energy, of course, to get on up. Of course, go to the back, grab some drinks, have some conversation with each other, view the work. The artists are here for a short time only. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> we do have one more week of the show, if not mistaken. Two more weeks to be on view. If you feel like you got to rush right now, you're welcome to come back. We do have gallery hours. Please watch our social media. And all of this is for sale. All of this work is currently for sale. <laughs> um, it's also available online if you are unable to you know, purchase today. The work is available online for purchase. Um, I hope I'm not missing anything. Thank you again. My name is Ms. Jolie. I've been your host today. And I hope you all have an amazing time with us. Thank you, Alonzo. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you.